Now you may be thinking that the whole point of aerobic respiration is to produce ATP. And we've gone through a series of reactions now, glycolysis, link reaction, and the Krebs cycle, and we've only actually made four ATPs, which isn't really very much. But finally, we have got to the final part, which is called oxidative phosphorylation, and it involves the electron transport chain. And it's here that we're going to make most of our ATP. Now, oxidative phosphorylation actually involves two processes, the electron transport chain, followed by something called chemiosmosis. Now, both of these uh, reactions happen uh, on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The inner membrane is covered in special enzymes called ATPase enzymes, which are required for this process. It is therefore highly folded gives, uh, to give such a large surface area so we can fit as many of these enzymes in as possible and to have uh, um, as many reactions happening in uh, a s quite a small volume in the mitochondria. During the glycolysis, the link reaction and Krebs, you'll remember that FAD and NAD molecules get reduced. This means that they're uh, accepted um, uh, electrons and hydrogen ions, which they are now carrying. In the electron transport chain, these electron carriers are then going to be oxidized back to their original form. So NADH is going to go back to NAD and FADH2 is going to go back to FAD. And when they do that, they should give up their electrons um, to um, electron carriers in the electron transport chain. These electrons will get passed down the chain of carriers, each time losing a little bit of energy as they get passed down a chain of carriers. The energy is used by these carriers to pump hydrogen ions uh, from the uh, inside the matrix to the intermembrane space. Now that may seem a little bit complicated, but let's have a look at this uh, animation and talk through it step by step. So here is the matrix inside the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. Then there is the intermembrane space, and then finally the outer membrane of the mitochondrion. These are the elect uh, electron carriers. Okay, they've got different names. There's NADH dehydrogenase, cytochrome, and cytochrome oxidase. What's going to happen is that the NADH and the FADH2 that came from the Krebs cycle, the um, NADH that come from the link reaction, and glycolysis are now going to give up their electrons to these electron carriers and they're going to go back to their original forms. So they are going to be oxidized. As they get oxidized, they give up their electrons to the electron carriers and they also release their hydrogens. As the electrons move down to the next carrier, they lose a little bit of energy, and this energy is used to pump those hydrons across. This process continues. The electrons lose a little bit of energy at the next electron carrier. They go down to the next electron carrier, and as they lose that energy, that energy is used to pump hydrons from the matrix across to the intermembrane space. Now, at the end, uh, once these electrons get to cytochrome oxidase, we need to um, get rid of them because we want the process to happen again at the beginning and the electrons to carry it on and pass down again. And if the electrons are still at the end, then that won't, it won't be able to carry on. We won't be able to repeat this process. So we need a final electron acceptor, which we actually use oxygen for. If you remember back to the original reaction for respiration, remember we need oxygen. It's aerobic respiration. And here is the oxygen. It's going to pick up the extra electrons is going to combine um, with hydrogen and it's actually going to form a molecule of water. And again, if you remember back to the original respiration equation, water is a waste product. So this is where the water comes from and it will be released at this point. The chain is now free to work again and for more NADH to come in, more FADH to come in, give up their electrons, uh, the electrons to move down the chain and the energy is used to pump the hydrogens across into intermembrane space. So what we've got now is we've now got a massive electrochemical gradient built up 
um, in the intermembrane space. And so we're now going to need to move on to the second part of oxidative phosphorylation, which is called chemiosmosis. Remember, we still haven't actually made any ATP yet. We've gone through all these processes and we haven't made any decent amount of ATP. Well, finally, in chemoosmosis, all the NADH we've used, all the FADH uh, we've used, we can now um, take that, uh, these, those hydrogens that are built up, and we can use that to generate ATP. So what happens in chemoosmosis is that the H plus ions actually start to move down an electrochemical gradient, and they move through this special enzyme called the ATP synthase enzyme, of which they are embedded along in the inter, um, on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So the H plus move through down the electrochemical gradient, and this provides the energy to synthesize ATP from ADP and phosphate. So now we can recharge these ADP batteries into ATP uh, batteries that the cell can use again. And this can continue. When we remember, we've built up a lot of H pluses from all those NADHs that have come from pr the, the earlier reactions and from the FADH uh, twos as well. So we've built up a lot of hydrogens, so all these hydrogens can move through and we can actually create a lot of ATP. Now, the quantity of ATP we can generate at this point is a little bit ambiguous. Uh, it was once thought it was 32. It's now, we're not entirely sure exactly how many it is, but it's somewhere in the region of 26 to 32 molecules of ATP, which is a lot considering up until this point, we had only actually made four. So in summary, let's look back at our overall picture of aerobic respiration. We've got glycolysis happening in the cytoplasm, which makes two ATPs and two NADHs. We've got link reaction, which makes another two NADHs, and um, that makes acetyl coenzyme A, which moves into the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is going to make six NADHs, two FADH2s, and two ATPs. Now, all those NADHs and that FADH2 can move into that electron transport chain. They are oxidized. Uh, they give up their hydrons, they give up their electrons. The ele energy in the electrons is used by the electron carriers to move the hydrons into the intermembrane space, and those hydrons move back through via chemiosmosis um, through the ATP synthase molecule to generate ATP.